What's up guys? Today I want to make a quick video about push buttons. Push buttons are, you know, it's a pretty simple topic, but there's a little bit more to it than you might for, uh, think at first. Um, when I'm talking about push buttons, I'm just thinking of a button that you push that might turn something on, turn something off, or of course your emergency stop push buttons. There's two basic types of push buttons. You got your momentary push buttons. Those are pretty standard for start and stop buttons. And then you also have your latching push buttons. Those are usually used for emergency stops. So I'll go through this video. We'll run through you know, a couple different scenarios, a couple different uses of push buttons, and I'll just give you a basic understanding of how they work. And if you're new to you know, electrical controls, industrial maintenance or instrumentation, this might give you just a little bit of a foundation and it will probably help you troubleshooting in the future. So first, let's just start about talking about uh, momentary push buttons. So a momentary push button is when you push the button, it's either gonna open or close a signal uh, circuit, and then when you let go, it's gonna release that, that signal. And when I say signal, I mean usually a voltage signal. When you're talking push buttons, you're talking to discrete or digital inputs, digital signals, um, on or off. You hear discrete input, think on or off. So a normally open push button, when it's out of the box, you hear normally, that means the out of the box status. It's normally open, when you take it out of the box, uh, that's an open circuit, normally open. The way you can test that is you can get your little multimeter and put it on the, you know, the two terminals where we'd wire it up. And if there's an open signal, when you measure resistance or an OL, that means it's open and then you push that button down and if that resistance goes down real low, like one or two ohms, then you know that's normally open. Generally, you'd use a normally open push button for a start signal. And then normally closed is basically the opposite. Um, out of the box, normal state, it's gonna show a closed circuit. And then when you push the button, it's gonna open it up. And you'd usually use that for a stop circuit um, or a stop button, because it's gonna when you push it in, it's gonna interrupt your circuit. You can use push buttons to energize a load. So you actually have the power that you're using to energize a device, whether it be 120 AC or 24 DC. You can use that circuit to actually energize your device, or you can just use the push buttons as an input to a PLC and then do all the decision-making in the ladder logic of your device. So if you're using a, let's say, normally open push button as a discrete input to a PLC, you would wire a power source to one terminal of the normally open push button, and that power, whether it be 120 or 24 volts DC, would end where the push button is. Then when you push in that push button, it would energize through the push button into, let's say, input 0-1, in your PLC, so when you push that button in, the power goes into that input terminal on the discrete input module, and then that input would show active in your PLC logic, and then, you know, you just use that logic, use that input in your PLC programming to make decisions, and then at some point, you're gonna turn discrete outputs on or off based off that. All right, so the last thing I wanna discuss is e-stops emergency stops which is a latching push button and normally for an e-stop you use a normally closed push button that way the power goes through your path whether it be to a device or to an input you're going to have power you're going to have that input signal unless the circuit is interrupted and when you push in that emergency stop it's a latching push button so it will stay latched until someone comes over and pulls it back out all right, so generally with an e-stop, you're gonna have two different input signals. Remember, they're both gonna be made or happy or high. You're gonna have two high signals, and then it's gonna be two signals in parallel running through the same e-stop. So you're gonna to wanna to see both of those signals high to allow your process to run. And a lot of times what factories use, if they're doing it the right way, they'll actually have a safety input card so they'll have both of those two signals go into a safety relay and that safety relay is going to monitor those signals make sure the voltage is very similar and make sure they're energized at the exact same time and then that safety relay is going to have an output that then could be used as an input to the plc to tell 
you know, your processor that the process is good and everything's happy. So again, an e-stop is generally going to have two signals run in parallel, two discrete signals that are going to both want to be made in order for your process to run. So that's just a little bit of information about instrumentation, controls, electrical work. Uh, I have a whole channel with videos on this topic. Most of them are centered around uh, career advice, but some of them are actually tutorials like this. Check out my channel. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Like and subscribe.